Hello, and welcome back to Lifeless Planet. You may remember last time we were in this drainage tunnel. Now, unfortunately, I did record already the next three parts, and, uh, the audio was just totally bad. So, I have to redo it, so I know what I'm going into, which is a little unfortunate. But, that's no reason not to have fun, right? Honestly, uh, it'll probably go even a little bit quicker, and then we can get farther. So, silver linings, right? Gotta be about that silver linings. Unless you can get gold linings, in which case, you know, screw silver linings. Gold is always better. Something something money? I don't know. I have turned the graphics down a little bit, uh, hopefully not even enough to really notice, but I was getting some terrible, terrible, terrible lag, and it's fixed it, so that's good. That gate is unfortunately unpassable, so we've got to go this way. Totally safe, I promise. Not something that uh, you'd really believe, I think, if you were just walking along the edge of a dam in real life, but in the game, you know, fuck it, that's fine. Yeah, I might sound a little bitter in this recording, because damn, I recorded for like another hour, and it's just, just gone. Absolutely no voice. And I've tried to do post-recording before, didn't really work out, I'm not doing that again. So uh, hey, I get to play it twice. I guess I don't really mind that, it is a good game. What's really terrible though is that there is a like a chapter start right here and it starts you right down here whoop yeah so it locks up a little bit because it's saving and starting the next chapter so like <laughs> after I had to restart the recording I could start right here but you can't get back up so I would have like missed that entire bit so I restarted it that whole chapter just for you guys a little annoying but you know Say la vie. Except that's French, and the uh, foreign language of choice in this game is, of course, Russian. Now here we have a fancy little device. The robot arm. Which is going to come in very handy. And a little explanation of it right here. We were fortunate when we arrived in that this planet was not dependent on us to develop its resources into usable power systems. In fact, there was already a network of devices capable of providing all of our power needs, despite the oddity of their appearance and construction, that we quickly claimed as our own. Curiously though, the control systems to activate these devices appeared to be designed for a very tall being much larger than a human or anything else we've encountered since our arrival. Regardless, our brilliant engineers quickly devised a creative robotic solution. With this mechanical arm, we are able to reach great heights, enabling us to operate the requisite components without requiring architectural solutions to accomplish the same feat. Still, the reason for the height of these control systems remains baffling. Were there visitors to this planet before us? Or could there really be life beyond the vegetation? Wow, I timed that almost perfectly. And another text. The mobile robotic arm is finally working. We discovered that traditional batteries were rendered inoperable within proximity of the structures. Then a junior technician suggested we use the green fire itself as a power source for the arm. After weeks of work, we finally succeeded. The arm actually draws power from the structures perfect solution to the impasse. Nice and convenient. Big ass Tesla coils over there. 
I wonder if that's how Tesla got uh, his ideas. Get dragged over to another planet by the Soviet Union and forced to create weird power structures that use this green bullshit. Now, it took me a very long time in the first recording to figure out that you don't actually go in here. I thought you had to. There's a button around the back of this pole. To summon an elevator. It's a bit hard to find. I guess the uh, wire gives it away a little bit. But whoever said I was observant, right? Because I'm not. Totally honest, I am terrible at finding things like that. But since I've already done it, you don't need to suffer through that. Here we go. Back on up. It's a very loud Tesla coil. And sporadic. If you guys have ever heard of the band Arc Attack, uh, they make music using Tesla coils, and so for them at least, it's basically constantly going, and that's what I'm used to. I mean, hey, maybe Tesla coils are normally operated like that, just sort of on and off and on and off, but maybe not. I don't really know. How cool is that, though, to make music out of giant electric thingamajigs? can't really think of a good descriptive word. Alright, our first puzzle with the robotic arm. It's got an interesting control scheme. So we pick up, yeah, Q and E, bring it in and out, and then the uh, WASD to move it around. And you can tell if the power's working from this green glowiness which means that power might be working, but these lines probably need to be replaced. <laughs> they shouldn't be glowing when power's running through them. Yeah, elevators. A little bit slow for my taste. Still, can't complain. Because it gets me where I'm going. Alright. The goal number four Chitiri. Come over here. Grab some dynamite. Perfectly safe. That's a total lie, it killed me last time. Let's not die. Yeah. Let's throw the other one off the side. <laughs> Down it goes. Not really a point to that. I guess the second one is just if you manage to screw up blowing up a wall the first time through. Not really sure how you'd manage it, but totally plausible. In, in some situations, at least. That is a big storm. Hmm. There's something odd about that storm. Not really, it's just large. Although storms do suggest an atmosphere, since there needs to be wind blowing around to pick up all that dust or cloud or whatever. So there is an atmosphere of some sort, and the camera goes right through the cable. Nice music. I'm sure that I could count the number of times that I haven't commented on music on one hand, but I just love music. And a big ass door. How fancy is this? Well, we're gonna have to need to uh, use the mechanical arm. 
And this is unfortunately pretty much a guessing puzzle. But this is the answer. And that's how you get through that door. Been a long time since we've seen one of these loading screens. And here's that same giant door, no longer glowing though. Well, let's just be on our way. The Wasteland. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, jeez. That doesn't look healthy. Yeah, just in case you were helping or something. Stop that. Is that blood? He looked pretty solidly impaled. How is there blood over here? Was he hurt before? Oh, jeez. Both my crewmates are now confirmed dead. It seems this planet is not lifeless after all. A deadly life form lingers beneath the surface of the planet. The woman seems to avoid their traps somehow. I will try to use this to my advantage, following her tracks as best as possible. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's up with the uh, stabby root of death, but it's all over. You can see it wiggling. Not really sure why he walked into it. I'm also not really sure why they abandoned me. They seemed very ready to do that since they left me when I was unconscious and then that guy, the most recently dead, left the other one as soon as he was hurt. And then I found him and the ground ate him. Not something you see every day. So I guess the green must be her footprints. She was the one with the glowing footprints before. Kalnar Basalt. Located a vast field of Kalnar Basalt. These natural formations appear similar to those on Earth, but at a far grander scale than any terrestrial occurrences I'm aware of. I have to assume they formed in a similar fashion to basalt columns on my home planet, via the slow cooling of huge lava flows. As the hot substance cools in the new rock, it contracts, sending deep cracks into the surface in geometric, geometric patterns. Once these cracks go deep enough, they result in towering columns of rock. So that is a lot of lava. If it, uh, if this was all lava to form these pillars, holy damn! Oh. Well, alright. Didn't really expect that to kill me. Kinda slipped. Well, alright, let's just keep going then. Her feet seem to cause a biological reaction with the soil. The tracks are my guide, a delicate female footprint offering me subtle comfort as I press on into the unknown. Strangely, it's not always effective. I seem to lose the tracks in rocky areas, of which there are plenty. In the right light, though, I can see where they pick up again to continue my journey. An analysis of the soil at the point of contact suggests that there is something in the orga something organic reacting to the person, or the thing, whatever she is, making the tracks. The faded glow is haunting, unsettling marks on the earth that make me recall nuclear propaganda films. I'm trying not to worry about the idea that with every step, my body is being irradiated beyond repair. Well, considering that we're alone on the planet, unable to leave, and probably without anyone following us unless we report back, I wouldn't really worry about it. You're doomed to die alone anyway. Cheerful thought, but, you know, best to be a realist. I mean, unless you catch up with her and whatever other post-Soviet colonists there are left. Where are we headed now? Humpty Dum. I 
try to use my jetpack to prevent from falling to my death. Sometimes it's effective, sometimes it's not. I've taken a sample from one of the root species. My field observation tools are not of much use, but from what I can tell, the creatures are a carbon-based life form. However, their cellular structure is completely unique. There's very little specialization between cells, and yet the cells appear to be far larger and vastly more complex than those of terrestrial animals, including humans. Interesting. And not all of them are hostile. Well, let's just continue on. Let's try to catch this person. Get some answers. Figure out if she killed my crew, and if so, why? Very important questions. Okay, almost missed that. It is very hard to control your flight after you've jumped. Let's not go that way. That does not look friendly. Yeah, which realistic on the uh, flight control uh, end, but a little frustrating. That's funny, isn't it? Like, you, ex you want games to conform to physics, but since they don't and you're used to it, you don't want them to do that. Or at least that's how I feel about it. Anyway, continuing onwards. Jumping puzzles. Oh, oh my. Alright, well, we've hit the 15 minute mark, so I guess I'd better wrap it up here. Not a whole lot happened this time, but it's something, right? So, I will see you guys next time on Lifeless Planet.